ghostly encounters come in all different varieties. Tonight we'll focus on three. The scary kind, the helpful kind, and the kind that simply lets you know they're around. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like these stories and want to hear more, click on the end screen at the end of the video or on the link in the first pinned comment below. The great gods of YouTube really love it when you listen to more. And we want to keep them happy, don't we? But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, together. Together, 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 together. There's an old bridge in my town that's supposed to be haunted by a young girl who drowned in the river beneath it. Legend has it, if you went there at the right time of night, you could hear her screaming. When my friends and I were in high school, we had nothing better to do than a little ghost hunting. Living in a town with a population of only 6,000, you kind of had to get creative to have any fun at all. So one night, we got to the bridge around 3 a.m., and we just sat there for a while, listening. But we heard nothing. About 20 minutes went by, and we all started getting skeptical. Everyone was joking about how dumb this was, when all of a sudden, the screaming started. This was the most high-pitched, blood-curdling scream you would ever hear in your life, and it wasn't just one scream, either. It kept going on and on, even when we were driving away in our car. But that's not even the worst part. After we heard the initial scream and were running back to the car, halfway back, a friend and I saw something absolutely horrifying. It was a girl running on all fours into the woods, at top speed. I don't talk about this much, because it upsets me to this very day. Plus, no one ever believes me. When I was younger, my grandparents lived in a house with an unfinished basement. I never liked it down there. There was a door that led to a storage room, and I always got a horrible feeling whenever I got close to that room. I was about six or seven years old at the time, and it was so uncomfortable down there, even if I was with somebody, I still didn't like it. One day, my grandma had me helping her with the laundry in the basement. She had to run upstairs when the doorbell rang, leaving me alone. I started to get a very bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. The lights began to flicker, and I heard the sound of talking, but it wasn't coming from upstairs. It was coming from the storage room. I heard someone behind that door say my name. And here's the part that freaks me out the most. The voice sounded like my grandmother. I was so confused. How could I be hearing her in the storage room when she was upstairs? I didn't want to move, but curiosity got the better of me. I began to slowly move towards the storage room door. But the closer I got, the worse I felt. The moment I got to the door, the basement lights turned off. Then I heard my name again for the second time. And again, it sounded like my grandmother's voice. This time, though, it was asking me to open the storage room door and help her. So I did. At first, I couldn't see anything at all because it was pitch black. But I heard the sound of faint laughter. It felt like it went on forever, but then the laughing stopped and the lights turned back on. At first I felt a little bit better with the lights on, but the downside? I could now see inside the storage room. There was a small clown doll in that room sitting on a chair. And my grandmother hates clowns with a passion and wants nothing to do with them. So why was there a clown doll in there? Just as I had that thought, the lights in the storage room went on, all on their own. I saw something that looked like blood all over the walls. I screamed and blacked out. The next thing I knew, I woke up on the couch with my grandmother asking me if I was okay. I like to tell myself that this was all a dream, nothing more. But I really don't think that's true. It sure felt real.
My childhood home was built on land used by the old Harris County Poor Farm and Graveyard. They used it until 1937 when they shut it down. The graves were dug four feet deep, and many were never removed. But we didn't know that until after we bought the house. Not long after moving in, my younger sister had an imaginary friend, Becky, who wore old-fashioned patched-up clothes from years gone by. Becky liked my sister's dolls a lot because she said she didn't have any of her own. My sister also said that Becky didn't like going home, but when it was time for her to leave, all she did was walk into my sister's closet and vanish. My sister had positive experiences in the house, but not me. I developed night terrors and started sleepwalking, even sleepwalking right out of the house on several occasions. I had a reoccurring dream that continues to this day about going into the closet in my room, which backs up to my sister's closet on the other side of the wall, and finding myself in another time and place, and it looked like the 1940s. One time, I was at home recovering from a tonsillectomy that I had while in the first grade. My grandmother had living quarters in our home. It consisted of a small bedroom, a sitting area, and a kitchenette. I was sleeping on Grandma's bed when I woke up and found that the frying pan on her gas stove was in flames from a grease fire. I yelled for Mom and she and Grandma came in the room. Grandma picked up the skillet to take it out the back door, but the grease in the pan burned her hand and she dropped it on me. I still have the scars to this day. No one knew how the stove got turned on and lit, but after coming home from the ER, bandaged up and in a lot of pain, my sister came into the room, stood at the foot of my bed, and said, My friend Becky doesn't like you. At the time of the fire, my sister was in school with her kindergarten class, so it couldn't have been her. My sister had a lock on her bedroom door, and I would always try to barge in when Becky was allegedly visiting to prove that my sister was making it all up and that Becky did not exist but my sister always had her door locked when Becky came to play. Many years later, after finding out about the old graveyard, I asked my sister about Becky, and she said that she believed that Becky was a ghost. I also think that she's the one who started that fire. I live in a haunted house, and most people are afraid of ghosts. There have been a few times, though, when the spirits have been very protective towards me and my children. Little stuff like putting the covers on my babies or humming to them while they slept. But I remember one time when they actually prevented me from getting hurt. My first marriage was a nightmare. He was lazy, abusive, and just a totally worthless excuse as a human being. I had my first son when I was 20, and up until that point, my ex never really hit me. It was just emotional abuse back then. But when the baby was two weeks old, he wasn't sleeping much. My ex and I were both totally exhausted, and he was completely hateful about everything. One night, when the baby finally went to sleep, my ex and I were still fighting. I took the baby into his crib, and my ex followed me into the room so he could keep yelling at me. There was a heavy antique wooden coat rack in the corner across from the crib. I had just put the baby down when my ex hit me on the back of my head. Before I could react, the 40-pound coat rack, about seven feet behind him, jumped forward and smacked him on the back. It hit him so hard it knocked him into the wall and left a big lump on his head. It had a heavy base and there was no reason at all for this thing to fall and it was only about five foot tall, so it shouldn't have hit him at all, because he was standing a good seven feet away. Whatever was behind that, I'm glad it happened. It helped de-escalate the situation, and he left the room, so I was finally able to get some sleep and remain safe. While driving home from vacation at 2 a.m. with my parents and brother, we hit some ice on a curve, and it made the car roll over. 
I hadn't been wearing my seatbelt, and I was ejected out of the car head first through the window. One moment I was in the car, and the next I was lying in some bushes in the woods, a good 50 yards away from the car. I tried getting up, but the pain in my shoulder was too intense. I had broken my collarbone. I really don't know if I passed out or just went to sleep, but at that point I lost consciousness. I don't know how long I was out, but I do remember through closed eyes seeing an intense light shine over me. Then someone, that I assumed was my dad, picked me up with ease and carried me back towards my family and laid me down next to the wrecked car. A detail that I remember clearly was how strong the hands were. The unexplainable part? After talking to my brother, I realized my dad never went looking for me. My mother had been badly injured and he stayed with her. In fact, they all assumed I was dead and they would find my body underneath the twisted wreck of the car. Another thing, we don't even own a flashlight. I don't know who or what found me lying there, but something did. I distinctly remember that light shining over me and the firm, strong hands picking me up like I weighed no more than a piece of paper. I just assumed it was my dad, but it wasn't. My collarbone has healed, but it sticks out a bit. It's a permanent reminder of that day. My mother-in-law was a very funny and cool woman. She and my wife had been very close. Unfortunately, she passed away not long after our son was born. Fast forward a few years and our son was three. We were living in a house right outside of Pasadena, California. I was giving him a bath one night and he started looking over my shoulder and acting like he was listening to something. A moment passed and he asked me, why does Grandma call Mommy a funny name? I asked him what he meant, thinking he was talking about my mom. But then he said, Why does Grandma call Mommy Bunny? That was my mother-in-law's nickname for my wife. I was really taken aback by this. My wife and I never used that nickname, but it's what her mother called her ever since she was a baby. I asked him where he heard that, and he said, the farmer told me. I asked him who the farmer was and he replied, He's my friend. I told my wife this story later and she was reduced to tears over the whole nickname thing. We both knew there was no way he could have known that and we kind of marveled at the whole thing. The next weekend, my son was playing in his room. I heard him talking like he was having a conversation with somebody. He was saying things like, Uh-huh. No, I don't know. And then laughter. I went into his room and I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was playing. I asked with who, and he said, The farmer. At that point, I started thinking about the Exorcist movie and that whole Captain Howdy thing, and this was getting a little more unsettling than I had counted on. I asked him where the farmer was, and he said, He left when you came into the room. What. The. Hell. When my wife got home, I told her this, and she was just as weirded out as I was. We had no idea what to do, but figured if it happened again, we'd have to do something. A few days later, in the middle of the night, we both heard over the baby monitor our son say the following. Grandma says I can't be friends with you anymore. We both ran into his room to check on him, freaking out. He was just sitting up in bed. I asked him if he was okay, and he said, Yeah, but Grandma says I can't play with the farmer anymore. He never once mentioned the farmer again. Not ever. He's 13 years old now, and he doesn't remember any of it. We do, though. All I can keep thinking is, if my mother-in-law told him to stop playing with the farmer, then that farmer was up to no good. And that still scares me.
When I was about three years old, I got too big for my crib and was upgraded to a bed with a mattress. My parents bought a mattress at a second-hand store. I later found out it was an old military hospital bed. Once I started sleeping on it, I began to be woken up in the night by a woman's voice. The voice would say, It's time to wake up, Grant. Wake up. You have to wake up. It's hard to remember, but I think I also felt a hand rubbing my back as well. I just thought it was my mom. I never felt afraid. In fact, it gave me the feeling of being loved and cared for, and I'd pretty much just fall back to sleep without even opening my eyes. And this happened a lot, almost every night. But one night as I slept, I was awoken by that same woman's voice saying, Time to get up, Grant. But this time, I opened my eyes up enough to see someone standing there, but I only saw her from the waist down. I clearly remember seeing all white shoes and a white knee-length skirt. I thought nothing of it and fell right back to sleep as usual. The next day I was talking to my mom and I said, Why do you always wake me up in the middle of the night? Mom had a really confused look on her face and she said, I don't do that. I've never woken you up. And I said, No, you wake me up at night. You say, Wake up, Grant. You have to wake up. My parents told me I was just dreaming. There was something else happening during that time, too. My parents said they would always hear me playing in my room, and they'd hear me arguing with somebody, even when I was in there alone. I'd say, No, I don't want to. No, I don't want to go with you. Both of them heard me do this. I seem to recall that this woman in white was trying to get me to go somewhere with her. I don't remember where. I just remember that I didn't want to go along, wherever it was. One day my mom bought a pair of new white shoes. When she came home, I pointed at them and said, Hey, those are like the shoes she wears. My mom said, She who? And I replied, The lady who wakes me up at night. She wears white shoes and a white skirt. My mom's eyes got really wide and she looked over at my dad. My parents then remembered that I was sleeping on a military hospital mattress and I had just described a nurse's uniform. At that point, they began to realize I wasn't dreaming or making this up, especially since I was so young. I didn't know what a nurse looked like. My parents threw the mattress out, got me a new one, and I was never woken up by this nurse again. They also stopped hearing me arguing with somebody in my room when I was alone. You can say what you want about ghosts, and Lord knows I've said plenty, but you have to admit one thing. They really do keep you on your toes. You never know what you're going to get. A mean one? A scary one? A helpful one? It's all a crapshoot. But they're always entertaining. Click on the end screen to hear more stories like this so you can stay scared until we meet again my friends.